currently I'm here myself. Okay, do you want me to just start? Yep, you can just go ahead and start. Okay. So I'll just I'll just share my screen and uh, get going. Okay. Um hello everyone and welcome to Apache Druid 101 at Datacon LA. I see the talks today were scheduled alphabetically. Um, that was my, it's a sorting joke. <laughs> okay. Uh, I like to think I'm warming up the crowd, but maybe not. Um, so what I wanted to do today was introduce Druid. Um, there's a lot to know about Druid. It's a super um, deep subject. And uh, there's just no way that I could cover all of this in a 40 minute talk. Um, but I think that it's a, I can do enough to explain what Druid is and why I think it's so cool and why you should go download it at druid.apache.org and get active in the Druid community, which is where I work. Um, I work for Imply. Uh, the, I come from a weird background. Apparently no one in community really comes from a community background. I worked in corporate IT. I worked in uh, healthcare IT. Actually at one point in my healthcare IT career, I decided I wanted to go get a master's degree in epidemiology and study infectious diseases and do research, um, which actually came in handy years later. Um, because now all of a sudden it's, uh, it's, val it's uh, relevant again. Um, plus my background in epidemiology gave me a, uh, a grounding in a lot of the technologies that, or not the technologies, but the techniques that would go into um, statistical analysis over big data. Uh, I've been working, so there was a juncture in my career in about the year 2000, which now makes me sound old as if my long gray beard didn't convince you to begin with. Um, and I worked at PC Mag. I ran half the test lab there and we did fun stuff like testing programming languages and switcher, switches and routers and firewalls and stuff like that. And uh, that then led me into the world of marketing and startups and evangelism and things like that. And I have a background, I have a background in security as well. And let's see, I always like to throw in one fun fact, which is that I like to cook competitive barbecue on the, the KCBS circuit. And yes, this is a thing. It's the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Um, I'm on a, we're not pros. We're not even weekend warriors anymore, but it's fun and we go out and we cook um, anyway. So let's talk about what is Druid? What is Druid used for? Uh, why was it created? And then how it works, a little internals. Um, so this is an example of what we would call a modern app, like the expectation that someone might have in doing a business intelligence, uh, doing some kind of interactive OLAP, um, interactive analytical processing. Okay, now to be fair, this is all uh, little video captures of um, some Wikipedia data that was streamed in via Kafka uh, into Druid. Actually, this is then in um, a product that Imply makes called Pivot, uh, which is our data visualization thing. But this is just an example. This is similar to the experience you would get out of a Tableau or Looker um, as other tools or even a superset. Uh, this kind of drag and drop and instant response over queries that are over hundreds of well, this is over hundreds of thousands of rows. So these were the, the initial intentions of Druid to be high performance, uh, to provide low latency sub-second queries. Uh, we talk about 
queries in uh, milliseconds um, and to do sub-second real-time ingestion on streaming data as well as on uh, batch data and to provide analytics uh, that are optimized for OLAP as well as for um, group by queries that kind of what I like to call slice and dice. Okay, so I, I took a look recently at all of the companies that are on the Apache Druid Powered By page. Um, and I, you know, just quickly keyed in their use cases. And this is how people are using Druid. Um, so they're, you know, our origins are in digital advertising, which I'll get to in a minute. And then there are user events, right? This is like a, anything that's click stream. So one of my, the points that I'm going to get to is that things that are timestamp, uh, organized by timestamp are well suited for Druid use cases. And I mean, this is how kind of the world is using Druid. APM application performance monitoring is a big one. Um, and again, digital advertising uh, requires a lot of real time um, ingestion and sort of very quick uh, query processing. So if we look at these, what are user events? Um, I always get worried I'm going to run out of time. So user events. And if we looked at what is a user event, these are click streams. So they're like, think about if you were trying to build your own Google Analytics, um, you might use something like Druid, um, ingest all the different activity streams and then write queries and build dashboards um, off of Druid to access all those streams. And again, this is like that slice and dice that we talked about. Um, you guys can all read the slide. I'm not gonna read it to you. Um, one thing Druid does really well is the, the groupings and um, building top, <clears throat> excuse me, building top end lists um, because these are built right into the Druid query engine. Um, looking at network flow, see, I, I personally think that um, open source network flow analysis is fascinating. Um, and that's because I've looked at network tools for a really long time. And it just seems bizarrely easy to me. We've now reached this point where you could take a stream off of a network device, take, read your net flow, uh, use, use Kafka, to, and then ingest it into Druid. And there are actually a lot of people ingesting various flows into Druid for analysis. There are a bunch of companies in the uh, security space that are doing this. Um, and again, I find this super interesting. I wrote a little demo um, just very quickly. Uh, wow, it seems so long ago. It was right before um, COVID started. It was the last trip that I went on was to show this demo that I wrote where uh, you could take just take your home router and immediately see what traffic was on it after connecting it um, through Kafka Cloud and then to uh, to Druid. Okay, so but keep going. Um, then in digital advertising, Druid is used quite often. Um, typically, you're talking about streaming data sets and they're very fast data sets. So Druid's used a lot in situations where bidding kind of takes place and you need to reconcile multiple feeds very quickly. Uh, and so uh, digital advertising is a great way of doing that, uh, taking in feeds from all different markets and um, providing them to your, uh, to your customers. And then uh, being able to run reports. So one thing that Druid does is you can hold your, you have your streaming data as it's coming in, that's queryable. And then you also can write the streaming data over time uh, to deep storage. And then that's queryable via historicals. And so when you want to run reports, it actually gives you excellent performance to combine streaming data and historical data 
in a single report. And that would be something like, show me what happened with my ads today and two weeks ago and six months ago or something like that. Okay, so uh, let's see. The need for Druid, where did Druid come from? Uh, in the beginning, now this was sort of back to, uh, back to what I was learning how to um, build things. Uh, you would have all your different data sources and you would ETL them into something called a data warehouse, which may be a product. Uh, and then you would expose the data in the data warehouse through various interfaces to your analytics and your reporting and your BI tools. Um, so that ended up not really working after a while because there was just too much data um, and people couldn't ETL it fast enough and get it into their data warehouses. Okay. So to solve that problem, uh, we started just taking the data from different data sources and dumping it into a data lake and then um, processing it and then putting it into a data warehouse where it could be accessed by analytics reporting and BI tools. Okay, so this is where Druid comes in. Um, and what this is sort of like a hybrid environment of uh, you have your original data sources um, and then you have a message bus, right? Like a Kafka or Kinesis. Um, you can also do, you can have your ETL process as well. And that stuff all goes into your data warehouse, um, whatever you're already using as your data warehouse. But I think, you know, what a lot of people have started to see is that their data warehouses aren't fast enough for their, their analytics use cases. So they're fast enough for some of them. Um, you know, your monthly reports, right? Who cares if that runs in two seconds or, but when you're talking about uh, streaming, building dashboards over uh, recent data and providing those dashboards to users at scale, like for example, in the Clickstream analytics role or the, the uh, advertising use case, then uh, that you need the speed of something like Druid. And it's not for everything, um, but I kind of think this is important because once you understand how Druid fits into kind of everything else, you can understand how best to use it. Um, when, when you need su like sub-second query response um, because uh, and your data is able to be pre-aggregated and you're able to um, do when you need high concurrency reads and very fast scans and that kind of slice and dice OLAP performance out of a dashboard, uh, that that's the kind of thing that Druid is used for. And I'll tell you though, also, um, Druid is a, a bit of a hog when it comes to memory and CPU. And you can already tell that that's not right for everything that you're using your data warehouse for. So I am in no way saying get rid of your data warehouse and move to Druid because it's faster, because you would, it's just not right for it. You'd be wasting a lot of money on, um, on RAM and CPU. And then you'd also, um, you know, anything that Druid excels at running against timestamps. Okay. And let's see why because it was created at Metamarkets, which is part of that digital advertising. And the timestamping was absolutely critical. Uh, it was important to know everything about uh, the ads that were placed and there's a whole bidding thing and um, 
it all happens in fractions of a second. And there was a lot of volume and a lot of advertisers. And it just, they, they couldn't find anything that would meet the needs of their, uh, their requirements for ultra fast response times over timestamp data. So we were talking about millions of events per second uh, ingested over both in batch and streaming data. Uh, it's a high dimensionality and hard, high cardinality data. And in that case, it was uh, semi-structured. So, and what they wanted to enable was this drill down fluid uh, slice and dice kind of reporting with thousands of users and um, it, it's it's actually it's actually pretty amazing because since Druid's been open sourced, uh, a whole bunch of companies have gone on to build uh, some very high scale and high performance uh, environments. So how how was Druid designed? What is Druid? Uh, Druid sort of takes the best of the search platform this idea of real-time ingestion and of flexible schema uh, and the ability to do full text search. But again, it, it's really actually not a search platform, um, but it has built on some components uh, using search and the searching and filtering capabilities. And that sort of came about from what we learned from the, the log search world. Druid's also it's a time series, it's time oriented. It's absolutely necessary. Well, it's not necessary. You could use Druid without a timestamp, but uh, it's not going to provide an optimal experience. Um, it's actually, everything's kind of built around ingesting and sorting data around the timestamp and there are time functions as well. Um, so, like I said, though, if you just have the search or time series, there's still a gap. And the gap is uh, the ability to do very fast ingestion and to, uh, to actually operate on the data very quickly as well. Okay, so Druid basically takes the, combines the features from log, log search, time series, and um, BI software and turns it into a column oriented um, database that is able to use the, the, the fact that it's a time series column oriented database to support fast scans and aggregations, uh, as well as a high concurrency. Um, Druid is actually built as a whole bunch of independent process processes, which I actually remember reading the original Druid paper before I got involved in any of this and just thinking um, just being very impressed that uh, that had been thought out uh, roughly 10 years ago to separate everything out into individual processes so it could scale, every process can scale independently. Uh, Druid's capable of doing continuous real-time ingestion um, and it, it can do that in parallel. And it's also, we recently added the ability to use SQL to query Druid. And um, most installations will result in sub-second to a few second query time. And like that's for real. Uh, it's, it's super fast when the data is properly organized and ingested into Druid. Uh, Druid has uh, indices built for quick filtering um, on ingestion, and it does the time-based partitioning. Uh, first, it partitions data by time automatically, and then you can add additional partitions 
uh, based on how you know your data. And uh, then when you're searching, you can filter on time and limit the, then you're only searching across the times you need to search. And this, this makes it lightning. I mean, if I run a SQL query and just search uh, for a string, um, I can then limit that SQL query to search for that string within a time period. And it's, it's uh, much, much faster. The other thing Druid does is it uses approximate algorithms, um, things like approximate count di distinct and approximate ranking. And it can do these things on the fly. Um, and it can also co computate, computate. It can compute approximate histograms and quantiles. Uh, and so this is actually really good on streaming data as well. Uh, and it's also able to summarize data at ingestion, uh, which is something that I think is pretty cool, where it can pre-aggregate your data. Um, so let's say you know, you're, you're getting data in, um, I don't know, let's say you're getting data in every second, but when you run your queries, you know you're only querying for every minute. I know it's a ridiculous use case, but you can set your ingestion spec so that when you ingest uh, after 60 seconds, it aggregates and then saves one minute. So the, the, the and actually what a lot of people will do is ingest to the most granular setting they can uh, in real time. <clears throat> and then after say a month, go from real time to a minute. And then after a quarter, uh, go to a day. And this changing granularity and aggregation is one, is, uh, one of Druid's strengths. Um, because you you don't lose anything as you we like to call it compacting as you compact uh, over time, it's compacting and rolling up. Okay, so who's using Druid? I'm doing a time check. I'm keeping going. Um, this is where Druid's in production. This isn't counting imply uh, customers. Um, some of these are are. Uh, are actually really pretty cool. Um, I don't know. The one that I that I think is really neat is Walmart, uh, which is able to take uh, inventory and um, pricing and sales information from all of their stores in North America and uh, run reports uh, in far less time than they were able to before. Um, and they do this so then they can do uh, more dynamic pricing and uh, do more intelligent inventorying. Uh, and that's a, that's a big problem of scale, right? So that goes back, oh, and Zscaler is another one of those uh, security use cases as well. Okay, uh, let's see, so. Um, that original Druid cluster has grown over time, um, and it uh, it has about uh, it has more than 500 terabytes of segments, which represents uh, 50. Pet Actually, this was back at that time. Okay, and um, Netflix. If you if you were to uh, there was actually a blog post that came out sometime earlier this year uh, that was uh, how Netflix uses Druid um, to do their uh, performance monitoring and uh, that this information is from that and it's a great example of how you can use uh, Druid and so they're talking about doing a hundred billion plus rows ingested a day. Um, then you can see they, they have rollups and they do their retention and they have hundreds of servers and they're able to have sub-second to a few second responses. And these are on dashboards. Um, and as you probably are aware, dashboards are uh, not one query, they're multiple queries. And they use a combination of streaming 
and batch ingestion. Again, it's that use case of streaming to see what's happening today and um, batch to see, to have something for comparison. Uh, as far as Druid speed goes, um, there was a, Druid's frequently compared, let's say, to Presto and Hive because they're both open source solutions as well and Apache products, uh, I'm sorry, projects. And um, as you can see, Druid is much faster than Hive and uh, Druid is also much faster than Presto. And this again, Okay, so this is done by a third party, uh, you know, not someone who had anything to do with Druid. And um, this was done at a university in Europe. So, I mean, you got to kind of think that it's, it's um, realistic and responsibly done and believable. And okay, now I, a large part of my job uh, at imply is to performance test Druid. And I have been running tests using this star schema benchmark, which is um, built on TPCH. And uh, I, I, these are hot off the press, people. Um, in fact, these aren't even on the press, or maybe they are any second now. I, this, the blue is comparing Druid 0.18. This is a 600 million row data set. And these are the standard SSB queries. You could Google star schema benchmark and download it. Uh, and actually, I mean, so we've made improvements to um, our, our query planning and to vectorization. So as you can see the, I mean, whatever blue bar was tall is, has become short, which is something that is pretty awesome. Um, and so performance is something that we take very seriously. Okay. Now, one of the questions that comes up is, is Druid right for me? Um, so as we discussed, right, we're talking about where you're, you need a fast query response over a large data set. Many times it's a streaming data use case. In fact, it's Druid adoption is largely driven by streaming adoption um, and low latency data ingestion that then makes data available for um, interactive queries. And um, the ability to query streaming, real-time data and historical data. Okay. And infrequent or you know, hardly ever updated. Um, in fact, it would be append only. Um, now, you've got to have a timestamp. Um, denormalized, you can do joins. You can't really do big, big joins. Um, okay. So where does Druid fit? I kind of talked through this. So I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, and basically, the way that we see people use Druid is taking the raw data, staging it, um, and then providing it to Druid. Um, a lot of what I, I've looked at has been uh, Kafka, Kafka and Spark, KSQL, stuff like that, um, is uh, feeding into Druid as an analytics database and then building the application or exposing the data to, um, a BI tool through Druid. Okay. Um, now, where I am in my job, I I I do tech support too, uh, and I I answer questions that come in over the Google groups and over the uh, ASF Pound Druid channel, uh, stuff that comes in on. Stack Overflow, and I, I've been thinking about this, and I, I would like to present a, uh, um, a a plan. And this idea is called Think Like a Druid, and uh, this is based on the questions that people ask. So one of the secrets to success uh, or failure in Druid is understanding what what you're going to do 
from the very beginning. Um, so the idea is that if you, uh, based on the, you think about Druid, let's not yet talk about uh, servers or processes. Let's just think about ingestion, database management, and then query, okay? The data comes in, you do something with the data over time, and you query it to take intelligence out, okay? Um, and so these have to be aligned in your mind before you start work on any, actually, they should probably be aligned in your mind before you start work on any uh, data and analytics pro project, but in Druid particularly, because it just won't work if, if they're not aligned. And by that, I mean, understanding, um, like aligning the granularity of your ingestion spec with the granularity of your queries. Um, so these are all the questions that come in in each group. Um, I'm not gonna have a test later, but I'm just, these are the ideas. Uh, and let's understand you've got your ingestion, then you have the way that you store and optimize data, and then you have the queries or the way that you get data out, okay? So now if we start to think about the, not just the functions, but the servers and the processes, okay? Um, so there's really nothing like a Druid server. Uh, it's really processes that are grouped together and they're usually grouped together for management reasons. Um, the leader is called the overlord, um, which is just, uh, I don't know, one of my colleagues thinks that that's hysterical. And uh, the overlord takes tasks and hands them out to um, the coordinators. And so what really happens is that uh, the overlord takes the work, it splits it up into discrete units and it hands it off to the middle managers uh, or the indexers. See, these are over on the right. Um, and they take the data and they analyze it. They build all those aggregations that I talked about. They build their indices, they partition the data and they encode dictionary files and they write out a whole bunch of things that we in the Druid world call segments. And then we take that and put it into deep storage. Uh, and then it can get read back in by the historicals to be available for queries later, okay? You know, everything is coordinated via Zookeeper so that the cluster and each piece, each process in the cluster knows where each other, pro every other process is. Um, we also have backup. You can do this just over HTTP in case you lose Zookeeper. And now there is another external dependency, which is for metadata storage. And that has to go into a relational database like MySQL or Postgres QL. And that is where the maps of where the segments are and what's in each segment go and where all the rules go for uh, querying and arranging the data in two segments. Okay. Um, yes. Um, before we actually jump into this next segment, I um, just want to remind yeah. you we have about uh, five minutes left and we did- Oh, have we're down question. to five minutes, okay. Yeah, and we did have a question on the, on the Q&A. Oh, sure, let's, go, let's do a question. And oh, and you know, before we do a question, because I know when we when we're about to run out of time, um, that uh, everyone the slides I didn't get to, you can download them. There's a PDF in Wova. Okay. Okay. So um, Curtis Bennett asked, how many servers would be required to manage, say, a petabyte of data? It. Geez. Um, 
I it, it's go it's going to vary about right. You're going to so what happens is the petabyte of data will get um, pushed around to all the different servers and then uh, into built into segments. Um, so it's and then they'll be all different different. Uh, I'm just thinking about like what I run. I, I would think that if you wanted to operate on, I'm just guessing, but uh, like in the 20 to 30 range, depending on how they're sized. I know there are companies that do, that um, are looking at, are, you, are ingesting um, like multiple terabytes a day and they're only running like 10 servers. Um, it depends how you build out your servers. Because we're optimized more for um, query, for more for around CPU and RAM than on storage. So that's why I'm having, try, it would be more like if you had a petabyte of data, um, the petabyte of data and you needed to query it in X number of milliseconds. Sounds great. Um, just, uh, so we have about three minutes remaining. Uh, okay, maybe I'll just you shoot, wrap it up. Yeah, let, I'll just fly through these really quickly. Uh, I, I, and I apologize, of course, this is one of those things that when I timed myself practicing, it all went smoothly and fit into my allotted time. Um, so here's the Druid console. I guess actually the most important thing to just shoot to here would be to wrap up and um, go go to druid.apache.org. Um, find you could email me uh, matt.sorel at imply.io. Uh, if you join the ASF uh, Pound Druid Slack channel, then uh, I am at Matt, and uh, you follow us at Druid.io on Twitter. But really, everything's going to be at that Druid Apache page under Community. And um, download the the uh, the quick start and play with the quick start. Just uh, run through that Wikipedia um, tutorial that I showed you and uh, start playing with it and get an idea of the the power of Druid. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, thanks again for that great presentation. Uh, I certainly learned a lot today. Um, thanks for making the time to, to join us here at DataCon LA. And like you said, if anyone has any questions, they can reach uh, you guys at, uh, on your Twitter page, your website, on Slack, uh, LinkedIn, I'm pretty sure. Oh, so, yeah. Barring and, and download the presentation so you can see my slides that I would have just rushed through anyway. And thanks, thanks a lot for having me. Are Let's there any more questions? Uh, that was it. That was the one question that we had today. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you.